My name is Elizabeth Elmwood. I'm a librarian from New Orleans, Louisiana, and today I'm going to be reading from Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse Five. It's simultaneously surreal, funny, and um, also deeply tragic, and it touches on the great issues of man's inhumanity towards man, while at the same time being downright bizarre. Um, and so I'm going to read a passage in which the protagonist, Billy Pilgrim, has been abducted and brought to a zoo on the planet of the Trophomodorians. And having been a prisoner of war during World War II and having witnessed the firebombing of Dresden, um, he asks the aliens how they have um, managed to achieve peace in their own civilization. Okay. And there we go. Billy expected the Trophomodorians to be baffled and alarmed by all the wars and other forms of murder on Earth. He expected them to fear that the Earthling combination of ferocity and spectacular weaponry might eventually destroy part or maybe all of the innocent universe. Science fiction had led him to expect that. But the subject of war never came up until Billy brought it up himself. Somebody in the zoo crowd asked him through the lecturer what the most valuable thing he had learned on Trophomodor was so far, and Billy replied, how the inhabitants of a whole planet can live in peace. As you know, I'm from a planet that has been engaged in senseless slaughter since the beginning of time. I myself have seen the bodies of schoolgirls who were boiled alive in a water tower by my own countrymen who were proud of fighting pure evil at the time. This was true. Billy saw the boiled bodies in Dresden. And I've lit my way in a prison at night with candles made from the fat of human beings who were butchered by the brothers and fathers of those schoolgirls who were boiled. Earthlings must be the terrors of the universe. If other planets aren't now in danger from Earth, they soon will be. So tell me the secret that I can take it back to the Earth and save us all. How can a planet live at peace? Billy felt that he had spoken soaringly. He was baffled when he saw the Trophomodorians closed their little hands on their eyes. He knew from past experience what this meant. He was being stupid. Would, would you mind telling me, he said to the guide, much deflated, what was so stupid about that? We know how the universe ends, said the guide, and the earth has nothing to do with it, except that it gets wiped out too. How, how does the universe end, said Billy. We blow it up, experimenting with new fuels for our flying saucers. A Trophomodorian test pilot presses a starter button, and the whole universe disappears. So it goes.